just remember this is like any consulting project. It's all about managing expectations. And so the more that you can help your client, which of course by now you've determined who your real client is, the board or your executive director or both, um, the more that you can help them understand about the act process, uh, the more that they will self-select out and help define a project that's going to be rewarding for them and for your act team. So what I like to do is the first meeting, my first face-to-face -face meeting, is really explain about the act process because after all, we're a nonprofit also, and we have stakeholders also. And you know, important part of act is making sure that you know our supply of volunteers, you know, continues to grow and that people have a great experience and really want to sign up and volunteer for the next project. And and I find that if you communicate that to the client that they're, you know, very sympathetic and want to help you make sure that happens and and really it's about, you know, making sure that act can go <coughs> forth and help other nonprofits as well so that other people will benefit from this experience. So uh, so really, I try to position this piece of the project as, you know, how can you help me sell this project to the volunteers? I mean, what's going to make this project sexy for volunteers? I mean, we want to get a great ACT team, don't we? And have all the right people with the great skills and have them be very enthusiastic about doing this project. And of course, you know, as a as a GSB alum yourself, you can give them a clue of what is sexy from a, from a, from a you know ACT volunteers point of view. Um, and then, of course, they obviously want to get some things done too. And so, you know, it's a process of negotiation, of figuring out um, what's going to work for the team and what's going to accomplish the goals and objectives the client has. I mean, obviously, there's a range of different alums, and what's going to be sexy to one is not necessarily going to be sexy to the other, but that also is going to help you write your uh, little description, which we have to turn into Laura, as to what kind of team you want, what kind of skill set you're going to look for. So, you know, it needs to be sexy to the target group of volunteers that you're going to be <coughs> getting if it's, you know, some kind of financial analysis piece or if it's a strategic planning project or if it's a marketing-based project or what have you. But... Um, I find there's usually two things that make people interested. One is uh, either the organization itself is sexy by itself. I mean, I, I can give you a good example. Roger got to do a project that was pretty sexy, I think, for uh, Habitat. Of course, I was the client on that end. But um, <laughs> uh, Habitat for Humanity. And it's a pretty sexy organization. It's well-known. People think they do good work. And there are a lot of people who are going to sign up just because the organization is really interesting. Um, I had that same phenomenon with Women's Initiative. A ton of people signed up for my project, uh, more than I needed actually, probably mostly because they were interested in what the organization did. So there's, there are going to be some organizations that are just going to benefit from their you know, brand, so to speak. And then if, if they're not you know, a well-known nonprofit, then you're going to have to work harder on the actual project to make it sound interesting. And I think what is sexy to uh, GSB volunteers is really um, projects that have an impact that will really be a turning point for the organization or help them make some very big <coughs> decision or or what what have you. That That's my opinion. My fellow panelists may have you some get, other you things. You get sexy and we get Coco the Gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> that's sexy. <laughs> so, uh, so there's a couple of other things that I think are important. One I mentioned already, which is making sure to carve out a project that the ACT team can own. I think that's also a sexy thing. It's not sexy if Taproot does half of your project for you. That is not sexy, right? So that was what I had to explain to Women's Initiative. Um, the other thing is figuring out the timing. I mean, Caroline mentioned this problem. Uh, you know, part of explaining the ACT process is explaining, you know, when does the team start and how much time we're going to spend on each phase and that there's going to be this mid-course review in the middle and just making sure they understand when are we going to be done. Uh, because if they have a real deadline, you know, then, you know, there is the possibility your ACT team will not meet that deadline. <laughs> and you want to have something that's not really hard and fast. You want to have, have something where there's a little bit of flexibility because you might discover something in the first half of the project and present something at the mid-course review that becomes a showstopper at that point. So, uh, you know, I think it's important to keep that in mind is looking at what are the real deadlines. Um, you know, if it's strategic, you know, it, it shouldn't be something that needs to be done next month. I mean, that's another clue in your screening. So 
so look at deadlines that would potentially impact the client and help them understand, you know, it's going to be six months before you see results. So if you need to see something before then, you know, that may not work. And we maybe we need to redefine this project. Um, and then another thing I would say is uh, put yourself in the client's shoes in terms of, you know, what's going to be a worthwhile outcome for them. Um, you know, look for kind of high leverage tasks that might be easy for MBAs, but might be, you know, particularly difficult for uh, people in the nonprofit sector. I mean, we really do think differently, and things that we may not think is a big deal are, are really big deal and real eye openers for um, people in the nonprofit side of things. Uh, an example here, a project that I led on San Mateo Public Library, um, we did uh, a project that helped them evaluate new businesses. And one of our leave behinds was a framework to help them do that on their own, which was very exciting for them. And it was very simple for us. I mean, we just came up with 10, de you know, defining questions and, you know, made an easy scoring system and put it together. And it really didn't take the team that long to do, but it had a huge impact for them. And they were very proud of their framework. Uh, and another big thing we did is to teach them the concept of opportunity cost, which was just just mind-blowing for them, and that was something that uh, they used continuously. And it's a business concept that, again, not a big deal for us, but passing that along to them was a really big deal. Uh, I would say that uh, consultants are, are generally hired for a few reasons. Um, one is that, you know expertise that you don't have. Uh, another might be your ability to tap certain resources that would be difficult for the nonprofit to tap, such as contacts that might be easy for us to have, or um, doing competitive interviews, it's very common to hire third parties to do that for you. And third is uh, getting extra resources to investigate projects that staff do not have time to do, so extra hands type of thing. So that's those are some things to think about. They're general, I think, for all consulting, but things to think about in, in trying to define um, you know, a project that would be worthwhile and rewarding for the client. Uh, ask for the right skill set for your team once you've you know, figured out what your project is, you know, make sure it's going to be sexy to the right group of people. So uh, think about um, how they might implement things as well. So, you know, there may be organizational issues. So try to actually think broadly. I find the kind of the broader list of skills that, that you put down uh, that you think might be relevant to your project. Generally, you'll get a much better group of volunteers who think they have those skills. And then... Um, I think we were supposed to address a little bit about the work plan itself. Um, you know, in terms of a general framework, there's, you know, a couple of, I mean, I think all projects are pretty much the same. You're going to start with defining what your goals and objectives are, come up with some basic hypotheses and assumptions that you're going to start with. There will be a data gathering phase of some sort. For some projects, it's very intense. For some projects, it's very short. Uh, some piece of analysis that you will do on that data you've gathered, and then you'll develop some kind of uh, recommendations based usually on some type of framework, uh, and then spend some time figuring out how to present that in an understandable way. And this is actually a really important step and, and something to spend some time discussing. How do, you, how do you present the results in a way that's going to stick with your client? Um, one thing that uh, we're doing with the Women's Initiative, for example, uh, the project was to do a feasibility study, which was cut back from doing a full business plan, by the way. Um, and uh, we've decided to present that by drawing on their own course material. Women's Initiative is an organization that trains um, low-income women to start their own businesses. So we're going to use our own course material <laughs> to present that to them. And the comment we got from uh, our main contact there was, gee, this is a real doctor heal thyself moment. <laughs> so uh, focus on that. Uh, look at key deliverables in your work plan and revisit your work plan, you know, many times during the project. I think this is like a typical consulting kind of thing. It's like, this is what we agreed on. This is what we told you we were going to tell you. Here, now we're telling you. <laughs> this is what we told you told you about it. So, uh, you know, we will get uh, requests in the middle to do more. And it's really important to say, well, this is what we agreed on for the scope and to kind of stick to that scope. Now, if your team agrees to do more, that's a different story. I mean, again, this is a volunteer project. If everybody wants to do it, that's great, you know. Um, 
And then finally, just be careful about taking on too much. There's an enthusiasm, particularly when you're a new project leader, to you know really want to do a, a big project. Uh, keep in mind that you know when the act office tells people you know, put in 10 to 15 hours per month for volunteer. Uh, keep in mind that that includes meetings, regular meeting times for your team potentially. So how much time does that really leave to do a lot of the work, and you know figure out what's going to be reasonable. If we can go back to yep. to this to the question of project definition, I, just a couple of of points I wanted to make. This is the time I think the most important part of this. You know, how do we make it work? Is project scope. This is the this is the time when you focus on the project scope. I've done about a dozen projects. Um, I'm not sure about all of them, but probably most of them started out a whole lot bigger than they should have been, and 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 bi much bigger than they ended up. And narrowing it down so that you're focusing, as as Cynthia said, on the things that are most highly leveraged, um, but also that work into the time frame and resources that you have is, I think, really really critical, and that's that's where to focus your attention. Um, particularly, be careful if you're doing a project, if you're leading a project in the um, fall round, uh, which is going to be a fact project with students because um, they're great projects. I've done two of them. Um, and it's really terrific to have the combined student alumni teams. But um, it does impose um, a different set of restrictions as far as the length of time that the project can go, because you can't go past really May, right? <laughs> um, or um, And also um, some of the issues with respect to um, people's time. There are, there are times in the school year where the students really can't focus on the ACT project. Um, so that's something to keep in mind with respect to scoping a project that is going to be uh, a combined student alumni project. Um, one other thing, kind of along those lines, I led a project with San Mateo City Libraries after Cynthia did about two years later. They were still using her framework. Um, we came in, and this was a this was a fact project uh, with um, with students, so it had to be relatively constrained as far as its scope. Uh, our our project was to develop a strategic plan. Now, within a limited amount of time and resources, that developing a whole strategic plan for them really wasn't practical. It also wasn't very efficient. Um, for anybody involved because they were the ones that had to really come up with what they were going to do and all. What we ended up doing was learning about their organization, developing a process for them to go through. And that allowed us within our limited resources to add a high, high level of value to them that then they could go. And I met with them a year later and they were working through it and they had all kinds of questions. and. Um, uh, but th again, that was part of the scoping process, and uh, I think that's probably the most important issue uh, when it comes to the to this time between you, when you've decided it yes, you should do the project, and when you um, uh, actually have the team on board. 